Whew, that was a job getting in here. Mark Menendez here with you, Tackle Warehouse Pro, back on Lake X. This is a new experience for me. I've never been here with the water this low. Don't know how we're gonna catch them. We're gonna give them our best effort. Typical fall stuff. Here's a big old red eye shed. I've got a new wake bait. I got all kinds of stuff. Have no idea how we're gonna catch them, but we're gonna catch a bunch of them here on Lake X. Fall of the year, we've had some cooler weather. Typical reservoir, kind of a drawdown situation, which should group them up pretty good. Fall, I love to power fish. I like to cover as much water as I can. Uh, bladed jig, spinner bait, lipless bait, square bill, all of those baits. But we'll see what happens here on how we're able to find a few fish here on Lake X. Uh, we haven't had any rain here in my part of the world for months, it seems like. And uh, you can definitely see that the lake is as low we had a heck of a time getting in. I don't know, we, we may have to leave this boat here all year. So we may not get her out. Water temperature's about 60, 61 degrees. So these fish should be ready to play ball with us. The cool thing about this wake bait in real shallow brush like that, where it's hard to throw a 2.5 or a 1.5, this thing's descent, angle of descent is not that deep. So I can actually still twitch it over the top of it, get it down there. It'll still deflect somewhat over wood. One of the coolest things about this bait is now I got options with the Strike King 2.5 weight bait where I can put it on the surface or I can reel it a little faster and get it down there 10 to 12 to 13 inches under the water and create a crankbait action with it too. So it's a, a dual action bait. And this one is a revamp, a new color called Tennessee Shad 2.0 and it's absolutely gorgeous. There's one, he hit it on the fall. I hopped that three quarter ounce deal up and he drilled it. This might be a darn big one. This might be a big, big, oh, I see what's happening. I've got him by the ear. Yeah, that's what it is. He slapped at it and I've got him by the ear. See there, he's coming through the water sideways. <laughs> Not really wanting to eat it, but I got his attention anyway. It's a darn good fish. They don't fight too much when you bring them backwards in the water. There we go. Look there, see, he just slapped at that thing. He just popped it and we got him in the side. Three quarter ounce red eye. Fishing it like a jig. You know, just lifting it and letting it fall. That's what's so deadly about that red eye is when it falls, it falls in a horizontal position with what I call the death quiver. And they really, really like it when it falls like that. Good fish right there. I hopped it up one time and it said, sha -ting! That one hit it. That's a, I missed that fish the first time. Three quarter ounce red eye. He's not even moving. He's not even wanting to fight at all. Well, all right, be that way. Just come on up here and join us. Our nice fish. See how that fish is hooked? He's hooked on the front hook right there in the lower part of the mouth. That means that fish hit it dead on the fall. Just on the fall, hopping it up and letting it fall. And he hit it when the bait was coming down, just like that with that death quiver. But it took me two strikes to get him. Two strikes to get him. You know, one thing we do as fishermen a lot of times, if we get a bite and miss it, we don't throw back. Had I not thrown back at that fish the first time he hit it, he just kind of nipped it. He didn't get it good. So he was semi-aggressive. But by making that second presentation in that same general area, I got that fish to bite. So remember that, particularly on these days when fish are not real aggressive, they're kind of lethargic, either cold water or frontal conditions, make multiple presentations if you've gotten a bite. There we go. On the fall, oh, there's a good one. 
on the fall. It felt like a jig bike. Tick. Felt like a jig bike. Look at that's a good one. Stay down. This doesn't want to get out of water. Uh huh. I believe we got him subdued a little bit here. Now yeah, this would be interesting, All right? There we go. All right, that's a good one. Look at that big old long joker. He's got it. Again, on that front hook, which means he hit that thing on the fall. Big old long fall bass at that. Thick. Three quarter ounce red eye. With this technique, Controlling that fall is really key. So my gear becomes a real player in the whole technique with this lipless bait. I've got a seven foot three inch custom speed stick, but it's in a, the Magnum Hammer. This is a rod I love to throw a spinner bait with, a buzz bait with. It's got a good light tip and a good parabolic action. Because a lot of times, like we saw in some of these fish, they just slap at the bait. So I don't want to pull those trebles out. 17 pound, Seaguar and Vizex is a big part of this to control the fall, make that bait have a little bit slower fall. And then the third component is my reel. It's a, a Team Lose Light in a 6, 8 to 1. I don't want to overpower this with a 7, 5 to 1 or 8.3 to 1, where we do with a lipless bait sometimes, but I want to be able to take up that slack, but yet get that bait down in the water column. That's been a real key uh, with this 3 quarter ounce red-eyed shad controlling it on the fall. It's just like jig fishing with treble hooks. That's the key thing about this. Uh, so I need a rod that's got a good tip, a good solid base, but when I hook up, throws that parabolic action into it and you don't lose many fish with this way. There's one. Uh-huh. He can just shake his old head. That one actually kind of hit it as I was lifting it up. He's got it swallowed. I mean, he got it swallowed. The fat boy there. Fat boy. Come here, big dog. You are just not even wanting to get out of the water. He's got hooks everywhere. We'll just get the belly, belly land on this guy. If I can get my hands around him, I'll just grab him like that. Look at that fat one. Now that one is a hammer. Hammer, hammer starting to lift up so that I can get it up to fall and he hit it as soon as it changed direction. It wasn't much of a bite. I want you to look at the quality of that one. I'll take one like that any day. There we go. One more bite. How about that? Uh-huh. Look at that big boil. I chose this royal shad color. We had a little color in the water and it mimicked a bluegill as well as a bait fish. And you can see when you got one to get it, he choked it. That little bait is completely gone. Oh my gosh. What a good one that is too. He's all tatted up. Look at him. Uh-huh. Get him this way. Got him. All right. I think this guy didn't want it. Look at that. That thing is gone, gone. Head first on that fall. When you've got tough conditions, you need a rattle bait like this, a lipless bait like this, this red-eyed shad, for its fall. It's real subtle with that death quiver. Instead of most baits falling head down, this one falls in a horizontal position. It's in the strike zone longer and gets you that bite. Hey, if you like this week's video, like, share, and tag a friend, and we'll see you next week, same place, same station.